If we talk about the project or the project we want to present today, we internally talk about the so-called KA Academy framework. Yeah. So when I pitched this idea to our global board in 2018, I said, you know, what I want to make sure is that we address for each functional area, what are the training needs per position in that functional area yeah, that are specific to the functional area and then make a decision what we need like when we already have trainings in place it's not that we had nothing there was stuff in place but we never had e-learnings yeah and where would it make sense to maybe create e-learnings yeah but it could also be still a classroom training it doesn't necessarily always have to be e-learning and e-learning is not always the best way so you need to make a smart choice of where it makes sense yeah and then um, and what you also see here, so you have like non-IT learning, so for example, compliance training or training on our vision and values that we created. And then you have all the system stuff that I was just discussing. And that you can find in the orange, where mostly all the other stuff you would find on your learning or development plan in K-People. Yeah? So, and also what we are doing as part of this project with every functional area is obviously to make a make or buy decision. Like I said earlier, we would never have someone internally create something on Excel that you can find on the market because that doesn't make sense. Yeah, we don't have time for that and you can buy that like externally. So we always make a bit make or buy decision. Yeah, and if you move on. To next slide. So this is our project plan and you can see that it started in 2019 and it's just until 2021. However, this does not mean that we are done. It's the extreme opposite. We're in the middle of this project. It's We started like functional area per functional area and we made that suggestion in 2018 actually. We said, you know, we can't do everything at the same time. And this had two reasons. First of all, it's just like the three of us. And back then we were actually just two because I was always covering one region. Yeah. So we are just three for like three or one and a half years now. And so it's our resources and then also the resources within the functional areas because we needed some convincing to do obviously that they spend time, that they have people who are trained as authors who put time to create all this material. Yeah. So, and we made the choice of starting what you see here, manufacturing, engineering, and, and KA production system is our lean area. Yeah, that's a very typical area for automotive to have because we knew that those areas are already very stable with respect to their global reach, their global systems, the organizational structure, the position titles, et cetera. And we knew because the heads of those respective areas, they were very positive with respect to this topic. So I knew uh, and I thought it smart and it turned out good that, you know, we would start with them kind of like, you know, to show quick wins, to show how it works and kind of like promote it for the next functional areas. Yeah? So we started them whenever it made sense also for the functional area, because what you also need to see from a global perspective, what I just explained with taking over the, the North American region, um, we had a lot of changes still, and I would never recommend to start something if like a functional area is like currently like redefining all their processes, they are implementing new systems, then you should, you know, launch this project at a point where you are ready to roll out, yeah, where you need the training actually, yeah, because otherwise you need to ch make changes and you still always need to make changes because it doesn't, you know, it's not, we are not stable, I mean, processes change, systems change. So we have a process for that in place to make sure that things are being maintained. But just from the perspective of why we made the decision of when to start which area. And you within this project plan, you see all functional areas that we have in the matrix organization. Yeah. Yeah, so we are in the middle of this project. And then if you want to move on, Julie, just again to just really quickly, so we have enough time for questions left, but really quickly, like from the project approach, what we do is we are kind of like leading the project, so we are working with the functional areas. I have to say Vimala and Mary do actually most of the work because they share the functional areas between each other. They have monthly meetings um, and it's we always make sure that the kickoff is with the EVP or the VP of that respective area. And then obviously it's fine for them to uh, define someone else to support this project, but we make sure we have steering committees in which we to have this upper management commitment. Yeah? And then we have so-called functional leads and we have one functional lead per functional area. Yeah, And this functional lead um, is usually uh, an officer 
like themselves. So they know the tool very well yeah, and they understand the tool very well and they understand the functional area. And they are supposed to, to um, support the authors within their functional area because we kind of need to make sure it's same like a key user structure within IT where you want to make sure that because we can't handle all of that. We have other projects to take care of. It's just one of our projects. Yeah, So we had to make sure to kind of like from the beginning set up a stable structure and I think it still works very well. And what we also make sure it's kind of like that, especially the functional leads that because they put a lot of effort into this project on top of their, their job. Yeah, that's always the issue. Like, how do you get the internal resources? And we always make sure like to have that net network to give them recognition, to write little postcards around Christmas. Yeah, and, and that sounds silly, but it's super important to, you know, keep this going. And I think Vimal and Mary are doing an awesome job to, to also do that. Yeah, so this is how we are set up. Uh, from the project and um, then for the future if you move to the next slide and then I'm done with the presentation so kind of like the next steps as I said we are still in that project so we are not done yeah I think the project framework somehow helped us to get this started and now we are we are working with every functional area so there's still a lot of work ahead of us um, we also make sure that we do an annual global survey on the user experience in the orange. Yeah, so we just did that and we are currently doing it actually until next week. So two weeks, we're asking everyone who's able to utilize the orange for their feedback, like whether they find the content they are looking for, what their experience is, what kind of output formats they prefer. So it's like a, a huge global quality check. And then we take that input and if there's, for example, a lot of people saying there is a transaction in SAP, I can't find anything. Then we go back to the respective functional area and say, hey, how about you create something? Because there seems to be a need. Yeah? So we try to go from two directions. So looking at the positions and then also from our side, having like this uh, feedback channel. Um, and then, as I said, for the future, also like determining what we want to do on the shop floor. So there's also a product that, that's on the folks for today. It's called Loop. It's also part of the, the TTS product range that we're currently looking at because we like the idea for our operators at the machines to have like a mobile device and they can go to their machine and they have some kind of QR code or whatever access um, uh, to uh, this app. And then the app shows what kind of learnings do I have for the machine and for my question. Yeah? So that's also an approach that we would like to go, but we're not there yet. That's future. 